treatment oppression. I asked sophomore Neri de la Cruz in his dorm if Che Guevara is his hero. Es tu héroe. He's a role model, he says. It's not unusual to hear slogans from 1960s revolutionary Che Guevara. Hasta la victoria siempre. Ever onward to victory. In the school's courtyard, there's a memorial for two students who died in a clash with police in 2011. And now the disappearance of 43 classmates all at once has reopened old wounds, they say, and deepened their distrust of authority. Rafael Romo, CNN, Ayotzinapa, Mexico. We will continue to follow that story. And as we said, the mayor has been arrested. Well, new surveillance video shows U.S. police officer Darren Wilson after the shooting death of teenager Michael Brown. This is the first we've seen this. According to the St. Louis Dispatch newspaper, here we go. Wilson left the police station for the hospital two hours after the shooting, but he seemed to have no visible injuries on his face or body. Newly released audio also gives more of a timeline for that day in August. Listen to when dispatchers reported a robbery with a suspect matching Brown's description. Okay, we're taking a stealing in progress from 9101 West Florissant, 9101 West Florissant. Subject may be leaving the business at this time. Stand by for further. I'm clear. I'm right here. According to the St. Louis Dispatch, just 10 minutes later, another officer called for backup after Brown was shot. 25. Get us several more units over here. There's going to be a problem. Is there any available Ferguson units who can respond to Canfield and Copper Creek? Advise. And that's how it started. A grand jury is still deciding whether to charge Wilson in Brown's death. Missouri's governor is calling for peaceful protests once the grand jury makes its ruling. Michael Brown's family says it's important that police in Ferguson act with restraint. And as CNN Sarah Seidner reports, the way demonstrators are telling their story is changing. Another night of protests where tensions rise. But in Ferguson, Missouri, it's all being sent out to the world via new media. See all those lights? Those are live streamers. They use cell phones, an internet hotspot, and streaming software. Covering the million mask march. To show live pictures to online viewers around the world. You know, before this started, I didn't even know about it. Christopher Gagne has now made a business out of it. He was one of the first to do it here. Several of those nights, our feeds would have up to 60, 80,000 people watching. He and his partner's live stream got the world's attention with these images. We have police department to turn off of our cameras. They didn't and were live when police used tear gas and rubber bullets. I got hit with a rubber bullet in the back and then uh, a canister in the head of tear gas. And I was able to film the entire thing. I didn't stop. They were also there when some of the protesters turned violent. The number of live streamers is increasing. For some, the goal is to give people an uncut, real-time look at the action for hours without much narration. Others share their opinions constantly. And a couple use inflammatory language. Leave! Get the f*** out of our neighborhood! That's the voice of Basim Masri. He's become controversial because of the way he and a few others speak to police and traditional media. Some protesters and police even call him dangerous. Some of the language used, you know, get the F out of here. Do you understand the reaction, like the human reaction? Of course, of course. But at the same time, you're dealing with people that have been oppressed in their lifetimes for years, and they have never had a chance to vent their anger. This is the way we speak in the streets, so it's kind of hard for us to filter ourselves when our emotions are running sky high. Sarah Seidner reporting there. According to Livestream, the site that hosts some of the streams, nearly 8 million people around the world have watched the videos coming out of Ferguson. Next here on CNN, pushing and shoving in South Africa's parliament after one lawmaker's controversial statement about the country's president. We'll tell you what she said. Plus, you may not recognize these two guys, but millions saw them dangling from the World Trade Center this week. Next, they talk about what was going on while they waited for rescue. Every country has an identity, a history, customs, culture. A unique landscape that determines how its people live, work, and play. Now, get an insider's look with CNN's On the Road. From the ancient charm of the Lana Kingdom 
welcome to a new age approach to therapy. Join me as we explore Thailand. On the road, Thailand, tonight on CNN. On this month's edition of Open Court, the best tennis players in the world are in London for the season's grand finale. We've got your backstage pass to meet the elite. And take a trip to the top with Grand Slam champion Marin Cilic. You might be dealing with some uh, difficult uh, parts of your life and then the most amazing things are happening to you. Open Court, Thursday on CNN, in association with Rado. When you witness war Division. and see the impact firsthand, when you face the reality of famine, genocide, and natural disaster, you can't help but be affected. But these experiences are important. They give us knowledge. She says, yes, women are the future. And they give us no choice but to ask questions, especially the ones people don't want to answer. This is a pretty shocking picture. Would you condemn President Assad for 100,000 plus deaths? These experiences don't just make it possible for us to know where the story might go. They demand that we go with it. Honored for their amazing work. On the next Inside Africa, Meet the continent's top journalists at the African Journalist Awards in Tanzania. Join Sony for an inside look at the event and learn how far they will go to capture a story for the world to see. Inside Africa, tonight only on CNN. In association with Zenith Bank. Welcome back. Opposition anger over the government of South Africa's president erupted in parliament. A lawmaker from a radical left-wing party called Jacob Zuma a criminal. And when riot police tried to remove her, they got into a little bit of a scuffle with lawmakers. Honorable member, Masha Bella, you've repeatedly on numerous occasions said that the president is a thief. And that is what and we're asking you to withdraw. Sir. I have stated that I'm not going to withdraw. Honorable Sarge, he is the Honorable greatest member, thief in the world. Sergeant at Arms, he can, is we, the greatest thief in can the world. we assist the member to get out of the house, please? Obviously, a lot of emotion over this story. The clashes came after Parliament cleared Mr. Zuma of wrongdoing after accusations that he used millions in state funds to upgrade his private residence. Well, the window washer stranded for more than an hour on the tallest building in New York it gives me the heebie-jeebies just to think about it. Well, they've got quite a story to tell. Their ordeal ended when firefighters cut through a window and pulled them to safety. Now they're talking about what they were thinking, what was going on while they dangled up there. Here's Miguel Marquez. I'm from El Salvador. Well, I'm very happy I'm here in the United States. Uh, God bless America. God bless Upgrade. Juan Lizama, 41 year old father of three, expressing a lot of love today. Happy to be alive after surviving a harrowing experience. Dangling nearly vertically from his window washing scaffold for 90 heart stopping minutes. 68 stories above the ground, off the side of the Northern Hemisphere's tallest building, one World Trade Center. Did either of you have a cell phone up there? And if you did, did you call someone? Who did you call and what did you say? Yes. When the scuffle st uh, stopped, I get my phone, I call my wife and say, there's a Hilda, something happened, it's out of my hand. Okay, and so you see the news something, but I'll, I'll speak to you, I'm okay. New York City, not easily impressed, held its collective breath for Lisama and his window washing partner, 33 year old Juan Lopez, father of one. In the beginning, it was uh, panic and uh, pretty much survival, trying to instinct uh, for a few minutes. 
The pair had been cleaning the south side of the building since early morning. Just after noon, they were ascending. Cleaning as they went, suddenly the left side began to sink. They knew something was wrong and hit the emergency stop. First instinct, emergency stop. 